Welcome to the Brave Podcast, everyone. I'm your host, Connie Jacob, and today is a very special day because I have a special announcement for you and two special guests. We are about to release the Women's Dream Launch Academy. Woo! What's that? I cannot wait because this is going to be an opportunity for you if you've ever had a dream to make a difference or if you've ever had this inkling to start something, but you just don't know what to do. You don't have maybe the right mindset. You don't really know who you are or where to start. Well, this is for you. And I'm so excited because I'm doing this with two very special friends, Nita Knapp and Charlene Woodman, who I'm bringing on the podcast today because we're going to talk a little bit about where we were back when we were just dreaming. And so welcome, ladies. Thanks, Thanks Connie. So excited that you're here. Um, a few years ago, we did a challenge called Get Off the Bench. And I'm wondering, what was it like for you before you were doing what you do now? I can go first. Um, so for me, I was really in my own way. I was so afraid to do what I really wanted to do from limiting beliefs. I was a small town girl. I just thought, who's going to listen to me? Uh, so I played small for a really long time. I was terrified. <laughs> I was I was in a position, this was actually four years ago that you did get off the bench. And I joined that, Connie. And so that was 2020. So we all know there was events occurring that affected all of us in different ways. Mine, the way that it affected me was financial insecurity. My whole, all of my work shut down immediately overnight. And so there was a financial vulnerability that I've never been in before. Other people may have been impacted at that time as well, or had different impacts of maybe people listening, you know, health challenges or family issues or other things that are very unpredictable in our lives that cause a complete halt. So I was shaking in my boots. <laughs> So these are very interesting places that you were both in. Uh, Nita, you being um, just limited by perhaps the story you were telling yourself and Shar, you needing to completely rethink about your income and how you were living um, based on what we all went through as, as a whole globe. Uh, I'm curious as to maybe for both of you to speak to, what would you say to the woman who is feeling small right now, Nita and Shar, what would you say to the woman who might be feeling a transition right now? Mm, I would say um, you have a unique purpose and whatever is speaking to you is for a reason. So find somebody who can help you transition into what it is that that inside of you is calling you to do. Um, because it's there for a reason and you know and I think that that we need to get out of our own way we need to be brave and we need to find community who can help us along the way to really step into our our dream and to our goals yeah I'll just ex maybe just continue on and expand on that and the first thing that I needed to do which I would love to share with anyone listening is remember who you are mm -hmm. I had to get right back down to the basics what was I what was my role my job I was a photographer okay well that's done <laughs> that's ended for now but what are the qualities that are in me not outwardly what are the qualities that are in me that can be reformed and reused and repurposed well I'm a visionary right I'm personable I'm creative I'm innovative I had to remember those things I had to kind of I had to call them forth again and say okay well these these are great for photography but they could also be used for something else where do I need to go what do I need to do to find that 
And I found that in community. I found that with a brave leader, someone who had gone before me, someone who was a chapter ahead of me. And so I would suggest that. I'd suggest remember who you are, the assets, the gift sets, the value that you already have within you and get around people that can help pull that out. Mm. You know, these are so good because I think sometimes, you know, either A, we just become tolerant of our lives. We just think, oh, like this is just who I, uh, who I am and the way I do things. And we just get into rote routine. And then there comes a, a podcast like this one that is meant to disrupt you. That's meant to maybe uh, give you a little shake wake up call going, is this really what you want your life to be about? Uh, do you have buried dreams? Do you need to revisit who you are or the, the labels that you've grown up with and the mindsets that we've just kind of become familiar with? Is there something that we need to maybe move towards? And so I want to just, I want to sit here for just a second because there are women listening to this who are very intrigued with this disruption and with what you've done with your lives. Uh, what does, what does your life look like now? Like, let's fast forward to the present where you're living your dreams and it's never perfect. So I want you to be really honest. And that's why I love you both. You're always very honest and real about the way things are, but where are you now? So where I am now today, uh, I have a few lanes that I'm in and that was part of, that's part of the glitchy part for me is really landing on a, something really like what's my main right now. I have about three or four that I'm tracking in and that's good. And that's serving me well at this time to have some multi focuses. And so it's helped me develop focus for who I can serve. Uh, I'm less out of my head about me now because I was in survival mode for a little while. And now I can, I can now give again, I can be in a place where I know I have assets that will help others. So one thing is I've launched a visual identity brand series for women to help them formulate their message through visuals. So it's congruent with the message that's on their heart for their branding. I also along with a partner have created a children's anime called Adventures with Eleanor. And it's about a little pearl, this little four-year-old pearl, Eleanor discovering her worth. And again, it's value-based. Everything I do is very value-based. It has to match and be aligned with what I value. And I value emotional and social wellness for our children. This was also birthed during the uh, global event. And we felt like a lot of children missed out on some social awareness some social experiences and we wanted to bring that into the home for families and lastly i'm a creative and innovative business coach that's amazing char and i really like how you mention the different streams like the different facets and i think sometimes we buy into this idea that it has to be one thing um, it only, you can only do one thing and there are women listening. You are multifaceted the same as Char, but, uh, maybe what we just need is to help you align what your values are. Like you said, Char, so that you can have all of your streams and you don't feel like you're going a million places, but it's in that aligned value, uh, lane, which would be very helpful. I know for me, I, I relate to that. I, I could be everywhere, but having that, that alignment has really helped. Yeah. What about you, Nita? Well, I am a mind renewal coach and not only that, but I get to speak life to other women. I, you know, I go around and speak at different workshops, different events. I host my own events once a year and I'm a facilitator as well. And I'm writing a book. So <laughs> um, things that I've always dreamed of doing. But again, just understanding what I'm thinking has helped me to just, you know, even when I say, you know, when you get those balls thrown in the face, when you have curveballs thrown in your life, it happens. 
it doesn't matter. Like no matter what path we're on, no matter what goal or dream or whatever we want to be doing, circumstances may take us off course. But I just keep coming back. And I like to have things. I'm a go hard, get her done kind of girl. But I've realized it's slowing down, taking the steps that I need to take, and just continuing to do what I do with excellence and serve others and speak life to those who are feeling stuck and not sure what they're thinking and just helping to renew their minds, you know, renew their hearts and take the two and then just go do good in the world and in your life. Because I think the more that we can embrace who we are, like Shar said, and do the things that we're called to do that, you know, that we want to be doing, it just brings me so much joy. So I get to be uh, the mom, the grandma, and I get to help other women uh, step into their dreams and, and renew their minds. So it's awesome. Oh, that's fantastic. I love it that you you get to be the mom and the grandma. Um, some people think that uh, if you're going to live your passions, um, get out there and, and step into your dreams, that you have to sacrifice family. And Nita, you're somebody who does not do that. If you follow Nita on social media, and I would encourage you to, and I'm going to put both Shar and Nita's social handles in the show notes so you can follow them. But you'll see that Nita, one of her values is family. And I love that you help women with the mindset because one of the things that I feel I've learned the most, and then I, I want to pass this back to both of you. What have you learned? Uh, where have you grown? But I feel like my mindset is a, a daily thing. Um, even... 10 years into my entrepreneurial journey, I have to say that I really feel that that daily mindset for me has been crucial because just when you think sometimes you've figured it out, things shift or you shift um, or you there's a new challenge or there's a new opportunity that we need a new mindset for. And so I see what both of you do so, so important in the steps of helping women from the ground who just say, I would love to, I just have no idea where to start. This idea of working on our mindset and working on who we are and our values are so foundational and I don't see a lot out there on these things. And so for me, that's probably how I've grown the most is just really learning how to cultivate daily practices that keep me in my lane, keep me going, keep me hopeful. Um, yeah. Little things would have thrown me off in the past. I would have been like, ah, that's it. Forget it. I give up. Um, that's how I've grown. Uh, how about both of you? How have you grown? Well, <laughs> go ahead, Nita. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. I would say for me, the area of mindset renewal that had the most impact and continues to have the most impact because other things sneak in like you were mentioning Connie uh, different phases of life different challenges different victories even it's noticing my I am statements or I'm so or I'm not <laughs> so anything that starts with I am or I'm I'm very aware of now and so, and there can be a process with that. So if, if, if I were to say now kind of stuck in an area, I'd be saying, I'm so scattered, for instance. Okay, well, that might feel true and that might have some truth to it, but is it true, <laughs> like fully true? So that allows me the opportunity to unpack that and why not. Okay, well, I do have a lot on my plate this week or this month or today. What can I do to organize those thoughts, those tasks? How can I help myself be brave and go from scat scattered to gathered and move forward? So I think our I am statements are crucial because they literally are forming how we view ourselves, our perspective of ourselves. And there's something to just noticing them, not judging them, 
because now you're judging that you just judged yourself and it's just shame on top of shame. Nobody needs that. <laughs> it's just noticing it. Oh, I just said I'm fat to myself or I'm never going to lose this weight or whatever it is for me that I'm feeling in. It's usually what I'm feeling insecure about. I want to move from insecure to I'm, I'm in secure. I'm secure with how I'm thinking about myself now. Mm -hmm. I'm very secure with what I think. Okay. So it's from a, I think to, I know, I think I'm fat. I know I've gained some weight and this doesn't define who I am as an example. Mm, powerful. Very powerful. That was a lot. Like maybe just pick one of those. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Just, yeah, I just feel like we can break down the I am statements and just be aware of them. That could be life-giving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So good. How about you, Nita? Uh, where I think where I've really grown is really noticing that uh, emotions are a message. You know, when I, because I'm, I feel everything, you know, I always like, I would feel sensitive and I wish, you know, I used to wish that away all the time. I used to wish I wasn't sensitive. I used to wish I didn't care. Um, and really understanding that you know, when I'm sad, there. why am I sad? Breaking it down, you know, I call it the name it, tame it, reframe it. So why am I sad? Oh, well, these things are happening. So what could I do to tame it and reframe it? And that has been so crucial in my life. I also have a daily practice that if I don't do it, um, you know, sometimes I say I could be a fire breathing dragon and noticing when my actions are not in line with my values, you know, the way I'm behaving, really understanding why am I behaving that way? What's happening right now? What are the circumstances? Where do I need to maybe have a nap, uh, go connect with somebody and just really understanding that what I'm thinking and feeling is okay, but I'm not going to stay there because I want to keep moving forward. I want to keep growing in who I am becoming. And not only has it helped me personally, it's all it's also helped me in my relationships. It's helped me teach others to do the same too. So that when we can understand everything that's happening in us, it can go through us and we can be a light. We can shine the light that's inside of us and not being perfect, you know, taking the perfectionism out of, we're not going to be perfect every day. And that's okay. But it's not okay to sit and beat yourself up. It's not okay to, you know, to be responding all the time, but are reacting all the time, but figuring out, figuring out how do I want to respond to a situation when I get that text, when I get an email, when somebody says something, it's like pause, figure it out before I'm making a judgment or a story in my head. So it's it's been very interesting to see how I was to where I am now. Again, of course, it's not perfect, but it's just really, it's such a gift to, to be okay, like how Shar says, secure in who I am in my own belonging and, and what gifts and abilities that I have. And to be able to share that with others, I think is a beautiful thing. Mm. And those things are often like perfectionism, uh, worrying about what other people think, uh, all these things I, I find are such barriers for most women who are daring to step into that crevice of jumping into doing the things that are on your heart. And so I, I think that that's why that's so important, Nita, uh, the part that you play in, in equipping women on how to get over those things. And it doesn't mean that we're perfect at it. It just means that we're, we're in the process I love both of you for all these things that because how you've grown is what you're passing on to other people. And that's what I love about you is that you you don't take what what you've gained and just keep it for yourself. You pass it on. And uh, I do want to ask you, you know, what are some of the, the dreams in your heart? I mean, you've you got off the bench. We, we're, you've moved forward. You've been doing some really neat things. And. I'd love to ask you, you know, where do you want to go? 
because this is where we want to take women this fall, this year, is how do we move from the idea um, or even the thoughts of who me or that could never happen. Uh, we want to move women from that place to seeing the steps that it takes to actually get to where you want to go. I know for me, I've I've always had very large dreams, but and in the large, sometimes when we have vision and my large looks different than somebody else's large, it doesn't have to be a big dream. I think we need to kibosh that doesn't have to be a uh, doesn't have to have world impact it could literally be the dream to make your home a safe place when it looks like everything is falling apart that to some people is huge because it feels like you're in the miry pit and you don't know if you'll ever get out so that feels big uh, for me i i have such a dream to see education uh become a place of health again and that sometimes feels like an enormous mountain that maybe will never change. But I continue to wake up every day being creative. How do we move forward? How do we, how do we make a dent? How do we just uh, put, put a pebble in the water and see the ripple effect? What can I do today? What can I do this year? How can I be strategic? All of those things. Uh, I find that one of the things that I'm personally good at is helping women figure out a plan to launch the next step. And so I'm about to launch an app. Uh, I realized that um, teachers and parents, they don't have time and they don't have money. They don't have time for me to come in and talk to them about uh, you know, how to help their kids. And, and when I do, it just kind of falls to the wayside because it's just a professional day. And, and the next day they're on with their life. They don't have funding. Uh, so I thought, well, what if I could create an app where you literally have me as your personal coach every single day for five minutes and just get practical. And so I'm about to launch that and I have a launch strategy. And so I will share in this dream Academy everything that I do to launch myself, um, what I do, I'm not going to hold anything back. And so that's kind of my little dream right now. But uh, what about you ladies? What's stirring inside of you? I think one thing that I do well is have authentic conversations with women because I really care about where they're at and where they would like to go. Sometimes we don't know where the, where we want to go is. So that part is just about having a conversation. And what I've learned is the answer is in the questions. We need to ask better questions. So sometimes a dream just feels like, what's your dream? It's like, I forgot I could even dream. I didn't know that was an option. I thought just this was my day and this was my life. And I forgot that I could dream. Actually, somebody might find themselves there. And I believe... I'm, a, I'm strong in the initial conversation with women in the understanding who I am. You know, identity is sort of a hot word at the moment. When I say it, I mean truly showing up, up authentically yourself, meeting yourself where you're at. Sometimes that just is a step going, oh my gosh, where am I? Who am I? So that could feel like the dream question. If I were to say, who are you, Nita? Who are you, Connie? Who are you, listener? What would be your initial answer? You know, would, would it feel like, oh, uh, 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 I know it did for me. I know it did for me. Uh, so, you know, asking asking a question like, how do you get lost in, in time? What, what types of things are you doing when you forget about time? Who do you love to see smile? Who do you love to impact? You know, these are the things, these are the questions that can get us into dreaming again and wondering, you know, how, how we can pursue life, our next step. 
So I think asking really good questions at the very beginning of something is very important. And then I bookend it at the end. <laughs> I'm not as much in the messy middle with everyone, but, <laughs> but we've got Nita, we've got Connie into the, how can we bring people to you now? How, you, if you have a message and you want it out there, and these ladies are experts in this, how do we get this message seen, heard, drawing people to it so I can bring the visual assets along and help support women launch into their being seen? What is my heart for the women who are going to be doing this or what? I, I forget the question. Um, you could answer that along with um, uh, what's uh, some dreams on your heart? Oh, it's, okay. Okay. But both. Answer both. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Did so, I answer the question? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you, like, I felt like there's, I, we obviously know there's a lot more dreams in your heart. Um, but I thought maybe, maybe Shar's just like choosing not to share certain things because, you know. Okay. You so, okay. Sorry to interrupt. Yes. I was sort of thinking more dream, a cat, like how can this make sense yeah. to the potential people we're trying to draw in? Yes. As opposed to my personal, if I were to answer that, I'd be married, homesteading, I'd have a chicken. I don't <laughs> I think that's going to do chicken. Oh, sure, well, quite as much. Chicken. Just give sure. her a chicken and a husband. <laughs> Can I add that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did chickens the other day and they're not fun. I'm like, give me dead chickens in a bag. I'll handle those, but not live okay. chickens. Yeah. Maybe a duck. They and husband, husbands aren't fun either. So, okay, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay I'm just gonna say and as a personal dream a husband and a chicken or two on a homestead farm love it <laughs> <laughs> okay so what I dream about is I always say I'm a small town girl with big dreams wanting to impact and sh share the light of what is inside of you to tens of thousands of people that is a big audacious dream that I have and I know it'll happen my smaller dream is and why well, I, I could say it's a smaller dream but my big dream is always keeping a house and a home where my family is safe secure can come back can visit and we just have so much fun together um, so that's another dream that I have. And, you know, it's always been a dream in my heart. So we've, it's just really important to me to keep that in my vision as well. And, and just keep, cre keep creating that for my family. Uh, in the Dream Academy, what I hope for is that to, for women to be able to see where they're at, you know, Sometimes, like Shar said, we don't know what we want to dream about. So let's see where you're at and what don't you want. And let's reverse engineer that and start creating the steps for what you do want. Because lots of times we don't know when we're stuck in that messy middle. I just knew I wanted to not think the way I was thinking. That's how it began. <laughs> I wanted to think differently. And I knew I had to start somewhere. And that's where it started seven years ago. So again, the journey of dreaming and where you're going, there is no finish line. And I love that when you take that finish line away and just keep stepping each day. So when you're in the Dream Academy, you're in a safe place. You start where you're at and then you just keep stepping in your journey of whatever it is. And that can be ebb and flow because there is different paths. There is different things that will take us, you know, in different directions, but start where you're at and keep moving forward. And that's my heart to see women just really embracing, again, their uniqueness, their identity, the dreams they have, and, and be in that community where they feel safe enough to, to do so. Well, you ladies have shared so much value with the listeners today. And I just want to thank you for being on the Brave Podcast and thank you for being an example and living out your dreams and for coming on this adventure together with me to, to launch other women and to not keep this to ourselves, but to pass it on. And so 
we have a summit coming up that you're going to be able to get involved with uh, to get your feet wet. Some people, this may still seem like a really brave thing to even think this way. So the summit is a way to get your feet wet. And then we can go from there. But I'm so excited to see women launched this year. Uh, you, you have a purpose. You have a destiny. Your life matters. And we want to help you find that. And so thanks so much, ladies, for coming. And in the meantime, everyone else, keep being brave. All the rebels in the world stand up. If you're a rebel on the grind, you don't care with your mind. Hands up. They can't stop us. I hold this.